immorality, anti-Semitism, and replacement theology are eroding the foundations of biblical Christianity. Hoyavel presents the Heartland Connection, where Christians are equipped to walk out the truth in God's Word and to support the land and people of Israel. Shalom and welcome to the Heartland Connection. Today we have a very uh, special program. We're going to be talking about the biblical festival, the festival of the Lord, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Um, so we're going to study this together um, here in the Heartland of Israel and with Rabbi Onadav. Welcome, Rabbi Onadav. Shalom, Zach. Okay, so we'll start with a very basic question. Rabbi Onadav, what is Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement? We, we learn about Yom Kippur in two different um, uh, places. One is in the sacrifices that we have to sacrifice um, along the year. Mm -hmm. After we learn about the sacrifice of Rosh Hashanah, and before we learn about the sacrifice, sacrifices of Tabernacle, we learn about, about the sacrifices of Yom Kippur and the law to fast to mm -hmm. feast, fast, fast mm -hmm. on this day, to um, leanot, to, to, to afflict. I think to is afflict, the way they afflict to your make soul. our soul suffer mm -hmm. in this day. And another place is portion mm -hmm. on uh, Leviticus chapter sixteen that talk about the unique worship of this day mm -hmm. because this day has something very, very unique that the high priest enter the Holy of Holies in this day only mm -hmm. of all the year. Mm -hmm. And around this entering, there are sacrifices, another sacrifices that we should make and there is a process of atonement that we have to make. Mm -hmm. All this around the entering of the high priest to the Holy of Holies and in the end of this process God promised us On uh, verse 30, verse 30, for on this day he shall provide atonement for you to purify you from all your sins before Hashem shall you be purified. Mm. God promised us when we will do this process, mm -hmm. He will for forgive us for our sins. Hmm. Wow, such a such a powerful uh, thing that God would cleanse and wipe away the uh, the sins and enable the people to move on uh, without the guilt and the and the shame. Um, I guess one question with that is, is as we know that uh, repentance is part of the process um, and that God forgiving us is part of the process, but what is it about the atonement that's an important part of that process? What, what exactly is the atonement? I, I hard to say exactly the difference between atonement and forg forgiveness, forgiveness mm -hmm. but I can say that repentance includes some uh, steps mm -hmm. and we can't uh, reach the forgiveness mm -hmm. without repentance. Mm -hmm. So here we read uh, generally about the sacrifices. Mm -hmm. Maybe this is the atonement mm -hmm. and and there is also, of course, the repentance beside the sacrifices because mm -hmm. sacrifices are not 
a, a magician mm-hmm. that we will slaught animal mm-hmm. and God will forgive us. Mm-hmm. No, we have to repent. Mm-hmm. We have to fix our deeds to mm-hmm. change our way and mm-hmm. to try to fix what we did mm-hmm. uh, all, uh, in the past. Mm-hmm. to change the consequences of our deeds, mm-hmm. to help one who we hurt and to uh, use our time better if we spend it mm-hmm. and try hard to bring bless to our family and our neighbors and all the world mm. so maybe we can say that this day come to focus us to to renew mm. our motivation mm-hmm. to to repent mm-hmm. yeah, I remember studying with you before and it was so powerful when you talked about how <clears throat> when you bring the sacrifice to the temple and you repent and you you put your hand on the animal right and then and then it's almost like you deserve to die because of your sin but then the animal is kind of taking your place in a way and and being slaughtered but but God doesn't want you to be killed he wants you to be renewed like you just said he wants you to be able to walk in righteousness he wants you to be restored and atoned for and then walk uh, in the right way. And I think that's just such a powerful picture to think about going up to the temple where the presence of God is and feeling that presence, but also knowing that you sinned and you're not worthy of being in his presence, but then having that atonement and the sacrifices and then realizing, okay, now you're forgiven and you're clean and you can come into God's presence. And uh, it's just, just such a powerful picture, um, an amazing thing that God would make a way uh, for that to take place and for us to be, to, to receive. And it's like you said, it's just that powerful scripture there in verse 30, and you, you will be cleansed. You will be, uh, purified, uh, from, from your sin. So, wow. Amazing, amazing things. Okay. So maybe you can tell us a little bit about, um, how Yom Kippur is observed today. What does it look like in the Jewish communities today? Okay. On Yom Kippur, we have five, uh, prohibitions mm-hmm. that come from the law to to afflict afflict uh-huh. our souls. Mm-hmm. It's the f- the prohibition to eat and drink, uh, to use the oil to put on our um, on your skin skin. The third is um, uh, to wash ourselves. Mm-hmm. The fourth is to uh, to wear a um, sh- um, <laughs> line. Uh, shoes. Shoes. Uh huh. And the fifth is to be with our wives. Hmm. And we focus almost our, all our day in prayers in the synagogue. We only go to sleep hmm. at home and the rest of the time we are in the synagogue praying. Hmm. And we wear a, a clothes of Shabbat mm-hmm. and we should not make any work mm-hmm. like in Shabbat. Mm-hmm. Um, that's it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Maybe you could speak a little bit uh, to the fasting because I know that the scripture says to like to afflict your soul to make like mm-hmm. you said make your soul suffer so how is how is the fasting uh, fulfilling that and and how is it connected to the atonement what's what's the connection there there are two connections first one is a one who suffer 
uh, begin to think about his mm. life, his sins, mm. why should I suffer? Mm. The other one is to be focused. To mm. be focused. Mm-hmm. In this day, we can't repent, make complete repentance in one day. Mm-hmm. We can't. Right. But it's very important that we can focus in one day in our will mm. to repent and to accept decisions that we that helps uh, help us to repent the rest, the rest of the year. Mm. It's like in the acceptance of the Torah. Mm. We said, okay, we will do. We can hear. Mm-hmm. We accepted the Torah. But right. to obey the Torah, it's not one moment. Mm. It's long journey. Like that repentance. There is one moment to decide, to accept mm. the repentance. And even we can say that one who decide and accept to repent become justice, just, just, mm-hmm. a, a righteous, mm-hmm. become righteous. Mm-hmm. But he can't stay in that position and say, okay, I'm righteous. Mm-hmm. No. Mm-hmm. It, you are ju- righteous because of your ju- decision. Now mm-hmm. you have to fulfill your mm-hmm. decision all the year. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. So in the, in the fasting, <clears throat> who all uh, fast? Does everybody fast or what age or, or how does that work in the community? Okay. Everyone fast uh, from the age that he is uh, committed to laws. Okay. It's from bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah. Oh, okay. So it's 13, 13 for boy or 12 for girl. And even a year before, they also fast. And the adults, everyone who is not in a dangerous of death. Hmm. If a one is a sick that the fast will kill him, Mm. so he should not fast. Mm -hmm. Okay. And... But even if he's sick and he he can't go to the prayers because of the fast, so Mm. he has to stay all the day in his bed Mm. and to fast. Hmm. Okay. And when exactly does the fast start and end? It starts before the sunset, uh, the day before, the Mm -hmm. the ninth of Tishrei, Mm -hmm. and ends after the shining of the stars. Mm -hmm. It's about 30 minutes after the sunset, Uh the next day, the 10th of Tishrei. Mm -hmm. I've heard some people say that it's a custom to have a special meal before the fast begins. Is that, does everybody do that? Yes, and even more. In the ninth of Tishrei, we learned from the verses that there is a mitzvah to eat. Hmm. It's like God said, look, uh, the day of atonement, Yom Kippur, is Hmm. happy day. You can't eat because of the fast, but it's happy day. So mm. eat on the nine mm-hmm. of Tishrei mm-hmm. to um, to fulfill the the happiness of this day mm. and to a uh, relief to easy mm. the fast on the tenth day. Uh, okay. Huh. Yeah, it is. It is such an interesting thing because it is. It does feel very serious. Like very sober because you're talking about, you know, sins and and repentance and those things, but it's also very happy because you know that our God God is a loving father who is, will forgive if we repent and ask. So it's this very interesting feeling of, of, um, 
yeah, being very sober and very serious, but at the same time, very happy that yes. we know that God. Because of that opportunity to stand before God mm. and mm. ask Him for forgiveness. Mm-hmm. So, you know, our prayers are full of things, songs, mm. happy songs mm. in this day. Wow. Yeah, that's actually another question I had is, uh, what, what are the readings and, and prayers for the day? Um, there's a lot. Okay. In general. We, in this day, we have five prayers. Mm-hmm. Every day we have three. Mm-hmm. On the evening, the prayer of the evening, morning, and noon. Mm-hmm. On this day, we have in the evening, uh, like Shabbat, we have additional prayer after the prayer of morning. Mm-hmm. And... In this day, unique, we have another prayer after the prayer of noon. We call it the lockdown prayer, Neila. Okay. Before the gates are locked. Ah, okay. To pray hard. Uh huh. To try to change mm. ourselves, our soul, in mm. the last minute of the day. Mm. Wow. And also we read on the Torah. Mm-hmm. On the morning we read the portion of Haremot, the first part that talk about the uh, worship of the day. Mm-hmm. And in the prayer of noon, we read the, the end of this portion about the forbidden of the adultery. On Acharemot, mm-hmm. on Leviticus, chapter 18, and 18 uh, all of it, all the chapter. Mm-hmm. So are there, are there certain prayers, like the, the week before uh, Yom Kippur, like from Rosh Hashanah leading up to Yom Kippur, there's also there's there special prayers and things yes. in preparation? Or what does that look like? Yes. We we call it slichot. Mm-hmm. It's a forgiveness, the, the plural of forgiveness in Hebrew, mm-hmm. like forgivenesses. Mm-hmm. We call it slichot. Uh-huh. And um, we, we read it, we say it, before the prayer of the morning or in the night after the middle of the night. And it's uh, to, to request forgiveness from God. Mm. Also, in Yom Kippur, we have another reading. Mm. After the reading of the noon, we read Haftara, uh, another a chapter in the Bible. We read the book of Yonah mm. because mm. of the repentance that uh-huh. he, he told us. Uh-huh. So in Jonah, it talks about the, the Nineveh and he comes and, and so they repent and then they're forgiven. That's right. And so it's connected. Hmm. Wow. Very good. So <clears throat> I'm just thinking about what this would look like in, in Israel back in, in Bible times because the children of Israel, they didn't come up to Jerusalem until Sukkot, right? Until Tabernacles. Yes, but, but, but most of them, I think, came... Even before? Before. Okay. Because between Yom Kippur and Sukkot, there are just four days. Mm-hmm. And, and they, some of them couldn't come in four days. Mm-hmm. So hmm. they came before, wow. and they could see the worship of Yom Kippur. Mm-hmm. And of course, it's part of their uh, uh, awakening to repentance. Hmm. Wow. So, so all of Israel basically is gathering possibly somewhere around Rosh Hashanah and then being there from, through Yom Kippur and for Sukkot, uh, all in Jerusalem. Wow. It would have been amazing That's for right. all, all the tribes to come up. That's right. <clears throat> the repentance, I think it's very base, basic uh, idea in Judaism. Mm-hmm. Because 
we uh, used to think about our lives lives as a very um, one direct one directed mm. the past is past mm -hmm. the past is dead mm. you can do nothing with the past mm -hmm. and the repentance says that you can change the past mm. you can um, judge the past and give it new meaning and take powers from the past so it become better because you used it you use it for good even if you sinned mm. it's difficult to do it's not simple but we we have on the Talmud a um, phrase that says the repentance is big It changes sins um, I don't know how to say exactly, but a sin that you made with intention to sin a, that you made without intention. Hmm. Hmm. It's less serious. Uh-huh. Zadon hmm. Lishgaga. Change something you did uh, with intention. Mm -hmm. You were have bad uh -huh. uh, intention, and after you repent, it's like you did it. You didn't notice. Mm. Did Just you? failure. Mm -hmm. it was it wasn't on purpose? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. And even mm -hmm. we have another sentence that says that repentance a uh, change. Sins to a uh, to rights hmm. ah. mm -hmm. to to something you should do uh, to like righteousness uh -huh. yes righteous and hmm. we explain that the first one is when someone repent because he fear from God afraid mm -hmm. from God mm hmm And this, the second is when someone is repent because he loves God. Mm. Wow. So when the repentance comes from the love, is stronger. Mm -hmm. It can change the past from bad to good. Mm. Wow. Yeah, can you share a little bit about the difference between the two? What, what is repenting out of fear and what is repenting out of love? What would you say is the difference? When you repent from a fear, it's because you fear You're afraid that God will, will punish you. Mm -hmm. So it's like to say, okay, I would sin, but I'm afraid. So, mm -hmm. okay, I want to repent. Mm -hmm. But when you repent from love, mm -hmm. you say, the punishment is nothing. Mm -hmm. You can punish me. It's not the, the issue. Mm -hmm. The issue that is that I love you. Mm. And I want to trace you, to follow you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I want to, to learn from you mm -hmm. how, to, uh, how to be good like God. Mm. So now the sin, we have to judge the sin again because the sin awake you to change you say or even not only awake you but also you say what was the the reason of the sin mm. I want better mm. I wanted better mm -hmm. I felt how to do it but mm -hmm. I wanted better mm -hmm. and it's it's good to want better mm -hmm. so in our life too when we uh, see someone and see the sins we have to to think deep why mm. why he sin mm. make sin what he wants 
what the good will of mm. the sin mm. it's difficult mm. it's simple to say he's a bad guy right. and that's all mm-hmm. sometimes people that we have good reason to say that they are bad right <laughs> but deeper view mm. of the world is to find the The good point because almost no one come and say okay I want to be bad hmm. no most of the people say I want to be good and you have to understand it you have to believe and you have to find the way to show him how to fulfill his good will hmm. in the right way hmm. Hmm. Yeah, that's really good. I've also heard that it's a tradition that there was uh, something red hanging in the temple and that when the forgiveness came that it turned white. Is that something from the Bible or from the tradition or, what, what, or, or from history? What was, okay. what was that about? Okay. In the in, portion uh, of the Mot, read about the God, He God. Mm-hmm. He got. No. Goat. A goat, yeah. The goat. Mm-hmm. That we send to Azazel, for right. Azazel. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah. So. On the Mishnah, On the Mishnah we learn that the high priest took um, um, a tie, tie, mm-hmm. red like tie. A, or like a rope or a rope. Or, yeah, like rope. Mm-hmm. Rope. And they um, cut it to two pieces. Mm-hmm. One he uh, tied on the um, a horn mm-hmm. of the goat, and one he tied on the gate in the temple. Mm-hmm. And when the, the one who sent the the goat in the desert uh, reach the place and send it mm-hmm. the r- rope become white and mm-hmm. it symbolize like to forgive the sins that are red mm-hmm. and to change them to white mm-hmm. uh, according to the verse, אם יהיו חטאיכם כשנים, קשה לגלבינו. If your sins will be like um, שנים, it's also years, but also it's a plural of שני, תולעת שני. The red. Uh-huh, I think a lot of translates say crimson, or like red. Crimson, mm-hmm. right, crimson. It's mm-hmm. a, it's orange red. Mm-hmm. Um, They will be white like snow. Mm. Will mm. become like a uh, white like snow. Mm. So it's also a uh, something symbol that symbolize the repentance, the repentance and the forgiveness. Mm. Wow. All right, one last question on the The days leading up to Yom Kippur and on Yom Kippur, is there a special thing that you greet one another? Because it's, it's kind of a serious day, so you wouldn't say, you know, Chag Sameach or something like that, right? Or wh- how do you greet one another? What do you say leading up to and on Yom Kippur? Um, we used to say, Gmar uh, Chatima Tova. It's like, a, um, I don't know, How to translate it exactly, but uh, it's like the, uh, God will sign you for good mm-hmm. um, um, 
like uh, for sure to end the signing mm. not to uh, wait and wait and wait so like on on Yom Kippur on the day of atonement that he makes the final judgment and and, and, he and, signs. We, and we and we say mm. it also <clears throat> if we meet someone that we will not meet again until Yom Kippur mm-hmm. so we will greet it, him with this greeting also in the 10 days Gmar Hatimatovain, even even before Shoshana, if we will not uh, meet him until Yom Kippur. Hmm. Wow. So it's Gmar Hatima Tova? Yes, Hatima is signing, uh-huh. Tova is good, mm-hmm. Gmar is end, is uh-huh. like a final. the finish, the final. Mm-hmm. Wow. Well, it looks like we've run out of time again, but thank you so much, Rabbi Onrav. It's been really good to study with Yom Kippur and what it is, what it means, the Day of Atonement. It's such such a meaningful, just amazing to study about God's forgiveness and how we can uh, be cleansed of our sins. So thank you so much for teaching us today. And thank all of you guys for listening and for joining us. And uh, wish you guys all Gemar Chatima Tova and uh, that you'll be blessed. Thank you guys for listening. If you have feedback on uh, what we've shared today, you can send me an email at zach at highevel.com. I would love to hear from you guys. So blessings and shalom from the beautiful, exceedingly good land of Israel.